Good evening, Prayer Valley. Uh, wake up, welcome, wake up. Welcome to uh, Thursday Night Live. What's up, Church? Prayer Valley. <laughs> What's up, Prayer Valley Church? We'll give it a few seconds uh, for a few people to log on. Hope everyone is doing well this week. I don't know if, how, I think we had a lot of people on Sunday, but if you weren't there, you missed out. We had a good, good service on Sunday. It was a powerful move on yeah, Sunday. For sure. Uh, Pastor Jay, uh, Pastor Jay nice. Gilbert was really powerful, really yeah. had a lot of prophetic words for people. I'm excited for this Sunday to see how the spirit moves. Hopefully some of you took on that challenge of getting yourself uncomfortable. We'll start praying that people get FOMO from this in church. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hopefully if they hear, uh, you know, how good services were, they, they want to yeah. show up. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pray people get a spirit of FOMO from missing <laughs> church. <laughs> the fear of missing out. Yeah, definitely. Hey, coming up, I know um, in about a month we got um, the youth camp trip, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Uh, what is that, July? It's like July 11th, I think. 11th through the 13th. <clears throat> so if your youth are going, I, I think the dead, is it, is it I deadline? Think, well, I think the deadline to pay was on Sunday, but I'm sure uh, if you make sure you get your permission you slips get in, in there. there. Yeah, get it, get your $25 in um, and. Get your permission slip in. And this Sunday is Father's Day, so if your dad don't go to church, invite him to church. Tell him that's yeah. what you want for Father's Day. Tell him you want, you want him to come to church. So bring your father to church. Bring your mother to church. Your sister, your auntie, your mm -hmm. uncle, your cousins. It's bring them all to church. <clears throat> I don't know. Have, I'm not sure what other. Well, we have the fireworks booth oh. starting the 28th, 20, 29th. I think it's setting up the 28th, but. Starts the 29th, so get the word out that we are going to be in front of Target in Lathrop, Lathrop yeah. again. So everyone you know, tell them about our fireworks booth so we can be busy this year. <laughs> well, not only that we can be busy, but that we raise uh, money for our food well, bank that we're able to feed families throughout. This is this morning. is a more uh, this is our opportunity to raise money, so we're able to feed families throughout the year. Yeah, um, and uh, we got a yeah, lot of families we feed, that, so. so. Amen. <clears throat> um, I just have a bunch of notes, um, really. I hope that it comes out as a word, but I really just kind of um, have a bunch of random notes that I uh, wrote today, typed up. And um, I guess if you were to ask me what I was talking about tonight, and for some reason the Lord <clears throat> has me on... Um, faith, you know, I've, I know I've talked about faith before. I talk about faith a lot and I don't know. It's just something that the Lord tells me, to, can you continue to talk about? And until he tells me to talk about something else, I'm probably not, not going to stop talking about faith because well, it all starts with faith. So. Yeah. That's what our whole, uh, foundation is based on is uh, mm -hmm. faith, right? What we, what we believe, right. how we believe and, and is all based on faith. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And I got a frog in my throat, so you're going to have to excuse me. <laughs> I've been flaring up. Like, I've had it for a couple of weeks and it's flaring up today. And I'm just going to, if I hack, then you just have to do it. <laughs> uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 and 7 says, For we live by faith, not by sight. And I know that I've been teaching in the church that the opposite of faith is what? The things seen right yeah. opposite of faith it, faith is a thing seen and the word tells us for we live by faith not by sight mm -hmm. uh and hebrews 11 1 tells us that now faith is a substance of thing is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things what not, not seen. seen it's the evidence of things not seen right. so right faith is the things we can't see mm -hmm. the opposite of faith, faith, faith right. opposite of faith is the things that we can see mm -hmm. You know, with, and with faith, um, one of the things that people have a hard time with is separating uh, the good times or the hard times, all right? Because a lot of times, uh, the good times takes a lot less faith than the hard times. Yeah. Or sometimes, vice versa, for other people. Sometimes people have a lot of faith in hard times, but 
or, or have little faith in hard times and, yeah. and a lot of faith in the good times. Right. And we it's have to... when it's easy. It's easy when it's easy. <laughs> but, we, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, that I've done in my life, that we do in our life, is that we don't really separate uh, the good times and the bad times. We, our faith is 100 all the time, mm -hmm. whether it's all good right. or bad. <laughs> so, knowing what faith is, is one thing, but having faith and putting it to work, but are you having faith and putting it to work? Uh, that's something else. And I'm going to tell you that to say that you have faith, but aren't applying your faith in your life is, is like you're lying and deceiving yourself. And there's a difference between having the knowledge and potential and then having and using it. <clears throat> Amen. That's like going to college, getting a degree to be a doctor, learning how to do use the tools and, and, and then never and then going around telling everybody you're a doctor but never putting it into practice, right? Just because you know what faith is and you have the potential for faith and doesn't mean that you're using it. And when you say that you have faith but you don't use it now you're just a liar mm. amen mm -hmm. everyone can talk a good game but when things hit the fan can you walk it out too yeah uh, now church listen christians listen uh you have to have faith you must have faith believing god is the <clears throat> here's a few things that uh what faith is or what, what you have to have believing god is the believe that god is the only god and creator Believe that Jesus is God's son in the flesh and that he died on the cross and rose again. Believe in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and that we live our lives according to scripture. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm reading my notes. I'll look at the camera. <laughs> I'm used to doing it in pastor's house and having the, the clipboard and stuff. We had a last minute change of plans. Uh, seeking God's will and direction for their life and follow the direction that he gives. Believe and trust in God's provision, comfort, protection, leadership, and wisdom in all things. Let me repeat that. Having faith, being a Christian, and saying that you have faith, you must believe and trust in God's provision, mm -hmm. his comfort, protection, his leadership, and wisdom in all things. Right. Not just the little things, not just the things that we need, not mm -hmm. just the things that we want, not just the things that we, you know run to God because we're in a bind it's right. in all things I think that you know when I when you think about faith and, and I'm going to talk and I'm sorry but I can't get away from talking about tithe and offering mm -hmm. is uh, because you know that's all I've done for 10 11 years just get up and talk about tithe and offering but I think when uh, I take tithe and offering I think I take tithe and offering so serious is because I think that's where most people uh, are fought with their faith right that money uh is the one thing that we need to survive on in this world today and people try to reason with god that they don't need to be a giver or they don't need to tithe and they think that god is going to be a reasonable god saying oh yeah you know i know times are tough go ahead and, and, and go ahead and keep that for yourself you're going to need it mm -hmm. and that's the key if you keep it for yourself you are going to need it. And it's still, right. it's still not going to be enough. Yeah. But I think that, you know, when it comes to God, you know, and when it comes to tithing, that that's where most people struggle. It's because, uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's what we, we survive on. It's a tangible thing. But when, but God is not reasonable when it comes to the things that he requires. Uh, and yes, God requires us to be givers and tithers. Second Corinthians nine seven says each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Now I've taught this before that not we don't give under pressure, we don't give reluctantly under compulsion. But God loves a church giver. It says God gives. It says each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And the most important word there is each one must. It doesn't say each one. Dis you know, think about it. It doesn't say each one this. It says each one must. Mm -hmm. So, and everyone knows that must means what? You have to. You have to. It's required. In Malachi 3.10, it says bring all the tithes into the storehouse. It doesn't say please can you. It doesn't say if you have it. It doesn't say 
uh, if you feel led to, it says, it just says bring. It doesn't say don't bring, or it doesn't say if you write, it says bring. That means yeah. you're going to do it. That's a command. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Mm -hmm. God isn't trying to, God isn't reasoning with us there. He's telling us that we have to do these things and we have to do these things in faith. Right. Amen. <clears throat> um, without going into too deep. Uh, you know, I've taught, like I said, I've taught on tithing and giving and the requirements over the last 11 years. And I've gone in some deep, deep teachings in the last 11 years. But, uh, so yes, you should tithe. And I've also taught that on giving and yes, you should give. God doesn't ask us to do these things. He requires it. It's part of your makeup as a Christian. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, putting God before your money and trusting that he will provide is the ultimate test of faith in my opinion, and, and, and I think in today's times, right? It's like, especially if we are not using faith and we're seeing what the economy is doing, how prices are going up, what, what the world looks like, right? That will, that's what I, I would, that's what I mean when the opposite of faith is the things that we see. See, when you start to see the price go up, the economy go up and, and everything and cost them more, then we start to lose faith yeah. because we start to worry and worrying is not of the Lord. Yep. Amen. That's why I said we have to put God first in our finances right. and, and trust that he is going to increase uh, and stretch further what he gives us mm -hmm. to live off of. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, and you know but, what? Even when times are tough like this and, you know, everything costs a little more and maybe you don't get to do as much, we still are provided for. Still. I mean, you got to be grateful for got a roof over your head, you got gas in your car, you got food in your belly. I mean, like I said in the beginning, I, I don't really separate my faith between the good times and the hard times, right? right? I'm just as joyful when I'm eating beans and rice as when I'm eating filet mignon and yeah. baked potatoes. Right. Amen. Uh, God will provide whether it's beans and rice or steak, but mm -hmm. we must put God first. And you know, I feel like that tangible thing is is really hard for people to to let go of and trust God. And but and they think, well, it's different now, right? It was no different in the Bible than it is now. Um, they had currency then, but they also had they were farmers, whether it was animals or their their what they grew grew off the land, right? They returned that to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, well, that's not the same. It, it is the same because they, that's what they bargained with. That's what they lived right. off of. That's what they ate. So to give that to God first was just as meaningful to them as it is and just as hard for them as it is for us to give up our currency. Mm -hmm. Right. But like I said, I think money is, is like a tangible thing. It's easy to say, I believe God for this, I believe God for this. But when you actually have to take a tangible thing and give it to him, it really tweaks our faith because we see it. Mm -hmm. And I told you that, f that seeing is doubt, right? When we see it, it's the, like it's like the killer of faith, right? But we can see it, so uh, it it it's really something that we struggle with in faith. Right. Well, but it's faith is the things that we can't see. Right. right. I mean, money is what gets you through the world. I mean, money is how we survive in this world. So it really is a a test of our our faith in God that we're going to survive in this world with worldly possessions that God's going to get us through it. It that's a, that's the truest test is, is you're going to put all of the, even all your worldly things, all your spiritual things, everything in God's hands. So whenever we have to rely on God, even for this, the, the minimal, the piddly stuff in the world, that's a true test of our faith. Oh, sorry. I don't but that makes like sense. I said, we know that the faith is the things that we can't see. So it's, yeah. you know, <clears throat> we, we give it to God and we trust his word because, you know, even though we can read his word, we got to believe what the word says, right? It, it, we can't, it's, it's not a, you know, like I said, money is tangible. We can hold it in our hands and we can see it and we can feel it and we know what it does, but we have to realize that giving that to God and trusting his word mm -hmm. is so much more. It builds our faith. Right. That's where faith lies. And God, not only that, but God tells us not to worry. Mm -hmm. right? He says, don't look at the things that you can see. Look at me. In Matthew 6, uh, 25, 34, <clears throat> it says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to drink or enough clothes to wear. 
uh, food and, and enough food and, and, and drink or enough clothes to wear the things that dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But you, or Heavenly Father, already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of, of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Mm-hmm. It's telling us right here, right, to trust in the Lord, have your faith in the Lord, put him first, and don't worry about anything else. I've said it a long time ago. I said, listen, you want to know what the key to living a stress-free life is? Is put God first. Yeah. You want to know what the key to peace is? Put God first. Trust in the Lord. Put your faith in God. Right. But to get away from tithing offering, that's just my number one thing. Like I always go back to tithing offering. It's like, well, how do I have build my faith? Start tithing in the Lord and that will build your faith. Start tithing, giving back to God and that start being a generous giver, a cheerful mm-hmm. giver. And that will put, build your faith in God. Right. But we're not just talking about tithing offering tonight. I'll get it. I'll get off tithing offering. I'm just, that's something I'm, I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we need to build our faith is to regularly spend time in prayer and, and in communication with God. And, you know, it's hard to um, know someone and have a relationship with them or tru- uh, have a relationship of trust if you never spend any time with them. Right. You know, when uh, Jen and I were dating, we spent almost every day together or talking or texting Right and getting to know each other and building a relationship and even mm-hmm. uh, to this day we've been married thirteen years and May mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse me we still talk and we still I text her every morning we still talk and communicate because if we weren't to communicate even though we've been thirteen years together if we were to right. stop communicating or stop spending time with each other we would grow apart. Right. And that's the same even with a baby Christian or a seasoned Christian. No longer no matter how long you've been saved or how long you've been in church, you can't right. spend time without God. You have to be in communion with him. You have to be uh interact you have to be spend prayer time with him to to keep continuing that relationship. Right. That's one of the second key things I have for, for building uh, faith in God is getting to know him right. when you get to know somebody it's a lot easier to trust them instead of just taking them at their word yeah. amen, amen. So, and you know it's like well I don't, I don't you have to schedule time you schedule time for everything some of us go to the gym not, not me but some people go to the gym right they get up extra early they schedule time to go to the gym right. some people schedule time to to uh, you know play time with their kids some people schedule TV time. Some people schedule this. You set an alarm. You got everyone's got a phone. It has an alarm on it. Set an alarm every day for the same time. Like, all right, this is the time I'm going to pray. This is the time I'm just going to sh- sit, pray, and talk with God. Right. Get to know Him better. Amen. Yeah. Get to know Him deeper. Right. <clears throat> and you're like, well, I'm, you know, like if I go back to the season, Chris. Well, I know God. I don't. I don't have to spend every day mm-hmm. praying with Him. I don't need to spend, uh, you know, every week praying with Him. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. Mm-hmm. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. That means, I, even though I've been married 13 years, if I stopped pursuing her, if I stopped talking to her, even if it was every, even if I skipped the day, be like, I don't need to talk to her today, right? Yeah. She knows me. I know her. I don't need to talk to her this week. She knows me. I know her. No, we would drift apart yeah. because our relationship would uh, get a wedge in between it. And that's what happens with our relationship with God when we spend time with him, when we uh, uh, ignore him and stuff, right? We start driving a wedge and the enemy sees that as an opportunity. Yeah. Sorry, about that. If you stopped talking to me for a day, I would think there was something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So we have to spend time in prayer and communication mm-hmm. with God to build our relationship. That's, right. That will help build our faith. Another thing we need to do is regularly regularly spend time in the word and apply it to our life. Yeah. So aside from prayer and aside from communication with God, we have to spend time in his word. Because this is how we get to know God too. How we get to know the will of God for our lives. How we get to know what, uh, how we're supposed to live our lives. Mm-hmm. We have to regularly spend time in the word, uh, studying it. Amen. Amen. And this yeah. is just the same thing. You, you got time to do everything else. You can schedule time in your day. Set an alarm. Like, all right, this alarm goes off. I'm going to pray. When this alarm goes off, I'm going to read the word. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can start small. If you don't, if you don't have time now, start small. I'll start with 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes. 
start with half an hour, if you, you know, maybe an hour. But <clears throat> the more you read it, um, you know, the and the more you're going to get, uh, it's going to draw you in. It's going to like, you know, like set a hook, and you're going right. to be like, man, you almost, you know, don't want to put it down. You're going to be like, oh, what happens next? Or what, what does this say? What does that say? Oh, and if you got a, a Bible that has like reference scriptures and, and it's a study Bible. Then you're gonna spend more time. You're like me. You spend time going back and forth, like, yeah. oh, that's where that. Oh, that's yeah. how that. Oh, wow. You know, and it has other scriptures yeah. that connect to that scripture, it, and, and it's, realize, a, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> how divine the word is, because yeah. everything uh, is intertwined together. Right. But we have to spend time in our word, and actually not just uh, spend time in our word. Like I said in the beginning, we can say we know what faith is, or we have the tools for faith, but if we don't apply it. Faith is nothing. We're right. just we're just fooling ourselves. Right. And then we, you know, by applying it to our daily lives, we strengthen our spiritual mu our spiritual muscles, which strengthens our faith. Right. Uh, uh, in Psalms one nineteen, King David writes <clears throat> one nineteen fifteen sixteen he writes, "I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight." In your decrees, I will not neglect your word. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we cannot neglect the word of God. We, you know, some people are like, well, I don't need to read the word. I pray. Or some people do the opposite. Some say, well, I read the word. I don't need to pray. No, mm -hmm. you have to do both. You have to, right. you have to, if, I mean, if, uh, you know, it, saying you go back to our relationship and Jim was just to leave a note somewhere for me <laughs> and I just read it or I left her a note every other day. It's not the same as having mm -hmm. communion or right. having and talking. Amen. Right. The more I, we talk and we, you know, we develop that relationship, I, you know, that's how when we started dating, we talked, we got to know each other. I, that's how we built trust right. in our relationship right. is getting to know each other. Over, amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, David's commitment uh, to studying and living out God's word is the key reason why he was remembered as a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he said, you know, he... He wrote, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Mm -hmm. David was a man of God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> one. The last one uh, that I have, and like I said, I could go, uh, this is like a, talking about faith and talking about how to build your faith is like a probably never ending message. And, and yeah. uh, I'll probably preach on it again, but I can't give you everything in one night. I can't give everything in, in one Sunday. I can't give you everything in all of my life, but I can give you uh, bits and pieces and crumbs to, to hold on to and to, to take and apply to your life. Right. But this last one that I have um, is is a little bit controversial um, to some people, not to me, but to some people mm -hmm. is really controversial is it to build your faith in church, you, uh, to build your faith in, in the Lord, you have to attend church regularly. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I know that some people are like, "What do you mean I have to attend church regularly?" Well, Hebrews twenty five ten twenty five tells us, <coughs> <coughs> "Not for sake of, for forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting in one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching." Acts two forty four says, and all who believe were together had all things in common. Proverbs twenty seven seventeen says, as iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Mm -hmm. See, when we're around like people, right? We right. we all start thinking like you're like, well, that's not a good thing. It is when you're talking about the Lord. See, you start going out, you start drifting away from from spending time with the Lord. You start drifting away. You start mm -hmm. skipping church. When you don't make it a habit, it becomes a habit, right? You start skipping church. Right. Uh, it's just like, uh, and I keep on going back to my wife <laughs> as, you know, and building relationship, but we have date nights, right? If mm -hmm. if we don't have those date nights and, and get to know each other and, and, and are still, you know, sometimes we're ever changing, you know, yeah. we're, we're growing older and right. we're ever changing, but we spend date nights and, and we, you know, just talk and whether it be about the kids, what's going on in life, work, whatever. But we have to go to church. We have to set those dates aside for the Lord. Right. Because we have to be with like-minded people. We have to be with people that are going to encourage us, mm -hmm. uh, teach us. Amen. And instead of going out, because you imagine like you skip church for <coughs> football games, baseball games, whatever. You, you were at the bar that night and were too hungover. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you think about the crowd that you're with when you're not at church. 
and what they're influencing you with versus the people at church and how they influence your life. Right. Amen. This is where church is where we go to get fed, right? We go, you, some of us had a rough week, uh, and we got the midweek service, but some of us have a, a rough week. We have to uh, attend church on Sunday. Some of us need a refreshment. Right. Some of us are meant to be there to refresh others. Yeah. Amen. And right. some of us are there to, uh, to, some of us need to go there to strengthen our faith because maybe we've been struggling and then, you know, we, we got to get at the altar and, and talk to the Lord. We got to, pastor has a word. I mean, this last past, this last week, I mean, that, that pastor had prophetic word for a lot of people and yeah. a lot of people need it, but a lot of people missed out mm -hmm. because, you know, they had other things going on. But if you want to know how to grow continuously in faith, you need to, Connections to keep you moving forward. Yeah. A biblical community creates uh, a place for friendships and accountability. That's a big one is accountability, right? Because yeah. um, sometimes as humans, we be become not accountable. Yeah. We, we drift off, but it keeps us accountable, right? It keeps us rooted and our faith will grow if we're rooted. Yeah. In a, a, biblical, commu in a biblical community, you're surrounded with those who speak the truth and love you. And to love you, and, and they study God's word, and we and they worship beside you. It's yeah. everything at a church is faith building. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, guess something. Oh, I just had one scripture. I know we're kind of about in at the end of the time, but um, John fifteen. Uh, it's a uh, Jesus teaching his disciples about uh, the vine and the branches. And um, I'm sure a lot of everybody has read the, the or heard the parable of the vine and the branches. Um, but in verse 7, it says, If you abide in me and my word abides in you, <clears throat> you will ask what you desire. Sorry, this writing's really small. I have to use my real Bible so I can't, can't hardly see it. Uh, <laughs> You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. That's such a good scripture for building your faith. Because it says, if you abide in me, which means you're communicating with God. You're, uh, you're spending time. Spending, prayer. Yeah, time not prayer. the word I was trying to think of. But yeah, spending time with God, praying and my word abides in you. That means you're, you're applying it to your life. My word abides in you. That means it's in you. It's in your heart. You're using it to live your life. You're, you're, um, you're putting it in. Uh, you're actually using it. Right. Sorry, I'm having a really hard time talking. Like I said in the beginning, <laughs> don't, don't just be one of those, those uh, people that say they know what faith is. All right, don't don't say oh I I have the knowledge of faith I and and I have the potential of faith but I don't use faith. Yeah. Amen. Right. Be a person that uses their faith that lives by faith. I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, I'll just say it straight up. Like you really, uh, and I hate to hurt your feelings, but you can't even call yourself a Christian without faith. Right. Well, and I mean, it says right here, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So if you're abiding in Jesus, if you're communicating with him, you're in his word, you can have the faith because it's right here that whatever you desire, whatever you need, all of your needs will be met. And later in the scripture, it says you will have joy, abundantly, overwhelming joy. So with your faith comes joy, no matter the circumstances, with your faith comes joy. So all you need, all it starts with, is faith and listen um, everything that we talked about tonight studying your word and then applying the word spending time in prayer and communion and attending church is all things that build faith but you got to take faith um, you know like uh, there's lots of things that people put in front of faith you put like you gotta have dumb faith you gotta have uh, you know, uh, I got a tattoo that says you gotta have, that says fearless faith. You gotta, you gotta have this kind of faith. 
Faith is faith, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, faith is faith. It says, now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things seen. We need to stop putting all these extra words on faith. It's just faith. And you got to have faith like a child. Like just, you got to close your eyes. And, oh, did we, I think do we disconnected for a minute, but oh. hopefully we're still there. You got, like I said, you can't focus on the things that you can see. You just have to focus on the Lord right. and, and apply your faith. You got childlike faith. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, you know, just believe in the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Like Nike. Yeah. Well, Listen, everybody, yeah. oh, I was going to just tell everybody to be at church. Yeah. Sorry about all the distractions, you guys. We got dogs barking. Our dog ran into the stand. Uh, you know, the the devil tries to get get us distracted, but hopefully it wasn't too distracting and, uh, you know, got the Lord talk to you a little bit. Don't focus on things you can yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or here with yeah. dogs barking. So um, be there on Sunday. Bring your dads. We hope to see you on Sunday. Yeah, invite your dads. Um, Good opportunity. Yeah. Love you, church. All right.